Two cars get airborne. One lands on his roof. Kyle Busch, oh so close to getting that win. But in the end, it was Harrison Burton getting the 100th win for the Wood Brothers. Let's talk about NASCAR under the lights at Daytona. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR under the lights at Daytona. A whole lot of action tonight. We saw huge crashes, three big crashes, two of those resulting in a flip and one of them a full flip, but Josh Berry landed on his roof in this race. We'll talk about those big crashes, those flips, what the cause of those were. Then of course we'll look at that playoff grid that is now really shaken up after another surprise winner, Harrison Burton, who was last in points going into today, gets a victory at Daytona, punching his ticket in the playoffs. Huge win for him and the Wood Brothers would break that down. Uh, let's go ahead and get on into all the crazy action that took place tonight under the lights. Daytona, the summer race, it never disappoints. It's always crazy. Let's get into it and let's start out by just showing you the finish. You see here on the top lane, Harrison Burton, Parker Ritzclaff in the 62 Chevrolet, Harrison Burton in the 21 Chevrolet, getting a push by Kyle Busch in the eight car to take the lead and ultimately he was able to keep the lead. And you see here, Harrison Burton has the momentum. Kyle Busch tries to get you know, he gets a little bit of momentum, gets some speed coming off a of turn four, but Harrison Burton blocks at the perfect time to stop Kyle Busch from getting past him and get his first win in his 98th start and his last season at the Wood Brothers as we know it and, you know, potentially his last season in the Cup Series. So this is a big deal for Harrison Burton. I want to start out by talking about the finish. I'm really disappointed. I'm a Kyle Busch fan die hard. This was a hard one to swallow. Uh, it took me a while to get in front of the camera and film it, but here I am. But, you know, after looking at the finish, I mean, Harrison Burton did everything completely right. I mean, the speed on the top lane, I was I was not expecting that. I thought with the 62 Chevrolet of Ritz Clap and, uh, and Harrison Burton, I thought those two were going to be inexperienced. I thought they were going to mess up on the top lane and not have as much speed as Christopher Bell or Kyle Busch on the bottom, but they, they did. They were able to push. They maneuvered everything correctly uh, to manipulate the air, to get the speed, and go by those two one of those more of a veteran driver, Kyle Busch, of course, and Christopher Bale, certainly, uh, you know, a championship threat every season now. Uh, so very impressive run by both of those drivers. I think that should both be noted by other teams, you know, especially by Harrison Burton, because he's looking for a ride next year. He will not be in the 21. Obviously, uh, Josh Berry will step in the 21 car next year, but just a really a huge win for Harrison Burton all around, right? I mean, this is the 100th win for the Wood Brothers. Another interesting stat, the Wood Brothers have won at least one single race in every NASCAR decade since the 1960s. Well, NASCAR was founded in 1949, so that's only one full decade that the Wood Brothers team has not won a NASCAR Cup race. And that's, it's impressive that they're able to get the win, for sure. It's, it's even more impressive that they're even able to stay around that long, right? I mean, they've been in, in NASCAR since the beginning. Uh, I think, I believe all the, the, it was a great drive, a great race. They did everything right. Their driver did everything right. And there's a lot of times I look at these plate races or these Daytona, Talladega style races, and I'm like, that driver did not do anything impressive to get the win, or that driver made a lot of mistakes to cause a wreck, but this time Harrison Burton played a great race, so I want to give props to him. He beat my driver fair and square, so I have to I have to give it to him. Heartbreaking uh, for, for Kyle Busch, none, none, nonetheless. I mean, Kyle Busch is, what, one car length away from getting two wins this season? You go back to Atlanta, you go to today, you go to a few other just heartbreaking instances throughout the season. It's just, it's hard to watch right now as a Kyle Busch fan, but at least we've had speed the last few weeks. Just want to mention that. Um, as well. But overall, a huge win for Harrison Burton. And this could catch the eye of some other teams. I know it's Daytona, a little bit fluky, had a lot of big wrecks tonight, but certainly just being able to prove that you can win and coordinate with other drivers uh, could definitely uh, gain uh, some attention from some other you know teams moving forward next year in the Xfinity Series, Cup Series. Uh, we'll have to see what happens for Harrison Burton moving forward because he does not have a ride in the 21 car. That ride has been given to Josh Berry, who was in a flip. Let's talk about those three wrecks we saw. The first one earlier on in the race, I believe it was on lap 60. Uh, a lot of pushing and shoving. Looked like Corey LaJoy was shoving really hard as there was a stack up. Kyle Larson uh, was also shoving really hard today uh, as well. Uh, so you can kind of point at those two for causing the wreck. But this looks more like a typical Daytona crash. I'm really big at finding who caused the wreck. I love deciding who the, the blame was. But this one really... LaJoy, Larson, I can't put one entirely on one driver. It was one of those Daytona stack-ups, caused a bunch of a bunch of calamity, uh, big crashes, big playoff implications for sure. Uh, Mark Truex Jr. was involved in this as well, so that's certainly uh, unfortunate. Um, 
uh, for him uh, moving forward, trying to get points. A rough stretch right now from Montrex Jr. since he was in that wreck. Let's look at the second wreck, right? There were 10 laps to go. Uh, Michael McDowell getting a great push from the two car. Uh, in the corner, though, you just you can't push in the corner. This is one of those, I'm like, you can't do that. We didn't see pushing in the turns. Uh, you know, excessive like that, except a few instances. This was one of those, and it just got the 34 car sideways in front of traffic. Joey Logano hits some car, gets airborne, comes back down uh, on top of the rear of the 48 car. So, once again, takes out a lot of drivers, uh, some playoff implications in that as well. I believe Bubba Wallace was involved in that wreck. So, huge crash there. Uh, we then go to two laps to go. And once again, that's really unfortunate. Right? I hate to see that uh, by Austin Cindric, uh, who's won at this racetrack before, you know, turn. Uh, the 34 car. You just hate to see that stuff at the end of those races, but it does happen. Daytona. It'll be interesting to see what happens with those two moving forward. We go to th two laps to go in, in regulation, right? We restarted with three laps to go from that wreck, and uh, we had three laps to go, went down to two, then had another wreck. Huge crash. Looks like Kyle Busch might get in the back of the four car, uh, in, or in, in the two car. Uh, they got sideways. The four car gets flipped over, uh, and of course, unfortunately, Josh Berry ended up uh, flipped over uh, at, at the end of this, they had to go, the AMR safety team had to go flip him back over and allow him to crawl out of the race car. Uh, so certainly uh, glad that everybody was okay after tonight from, from what we know. You know, everybody crawled out of the race car. If they were involved in a wreck, everybody seemed okay. Uh, so that's certainly great news. Uh, the concern, once again, the NBC booth has once again been, uh, you know, really hard on NASCAR the last few weeks is the flips. Because you don't want cars in the air, which is certainly a big concern, right? I mean, this is now three cars in the air in the last two weeks in the Cup Series. You add the Xfinity Series in this, well, you can make it four because there were two flips last week in Michigan in the Xfinity and the Cup, two weeks, two flips this week at Daytona in the Cup Series. So certainly, uh, I think NASCAR can go back and look at this. They will prevent the flips, but when you're at these high-speed racetracks, it's so hard, almost impossible to stop them from you know, from any circumstance not getting uh, flipped over in the air. Once again, the concern is not the flip itself, right? The flip itself usually doesn't cause injuries. Uh, it's what, you know, potentially could happen with it. Where will that car land? Will it land on top of another car? Will it land in a catch fence and, and you know, potentially spray debris into a grandstand? That's what you're trying to avoid with cars in the air. It's not necessarily the flipping or the barrel rolling that's exceptionally dangerous. It's what that car could end, where that car could end up landing uh, is a concern, you know, in a fence, on top of another car. So after all those crashes that certainly took a lot of drivers out, let's take a look at the results itself. Once again, Harrison Burton got the win. Kyle Busch, once again, heartbreaking second place finish. Nice run for Christopher Bell, right? Another third place finish. You know, he's been getting some results at these at these big uh, drafting track style races the last few years, right? You know, he talked about how he was concerned for these races, didn't have a lot of luck, never got the good finish. Another third place finish at Daytona this year. I think he finished second in the Daytona 500 last year. So some good runs for Christopher Bell lately at these types of tracks, getting some solid runs, right? So we'll certainly have to keep an eye on that moving forward as he sort of improved as a, as a super speedway drafting type racer. Uh, Cody Ware, you know, one thing that's fun about looking at the results for this Daytona summer race the last few years is the drivers in the top 10. I believe this is his second top 10 at Daytona in the summer. If you go back to 2022, he was in the top 10, I believe. Uh, fourth place finish tonight for Ware in the Ford, 15 Ford. Uh, Ty Gibbs, nice run for him. Points day for him, big time uh, to finish in the fifth position. Bubba Wallace, sixth place. It's a big points day. It's a good points day. But Bubba Wallace is still far below the cut line. We'll show that in just a little bit. Uh, Parker Retzlaff, once again, great performance tonight in that 62 Chevrolet. The way he was able to push Harrison Burton, not push him sideways, not cause a wreck is important for one of those younger drivers that has not had a lot of starts, does not race full-time. It's important to not wreck. It's important to not cause the wreck, and it's really important when you do something that's risky, push a driver like Harrison Burton perfectly. You don't push him in the corner, cause a wreck. You do it great. Once again, shout out to the 62 Chevrolet. Great ride tonight. Brad Kozlowski actually re received a restart violation. It was very obvious that he jumped the restart, got a penalty, had to come down pit road, came back up to finish in the eighth position. Nice run for him. Daniel Hemrick, another one of those drivers that typically don't run up front, uh, finishing the ninth position. Chris Buescher, um, uh, once again, big points day for him, uh, was able to finish in the top 10 once again. So his two RFK fours once again together, just one spot sort of separating them. Go ahead, let's talk about the points, right? That's big. Uh, let's talk about the regular season points first. You see on the far left, playoff points is how many points you would receive uh, wherever you finish. So right, first place gets 15, second 10, third 8, all the way down to 1 in the top 10. The top 10 would receive points. You see uh, the top 8 all have wins this year. Uh, Tyler Riddick, 17 point cushion now. Bad night for really everybody up front. I mean, Tyler Riddick only received 9 points. Uh, Chase Elliott, trying to catch him, only received 1 point. 
points, so actually lost uh, due to some engine trouble at the beginning of the race. Kyle Larson caught up in a late race wreck, only 17, uh, only gained a few points on the night. Uh, so 17 points behind Tyler Reddick. Kyle Larson can catch him, but Reddick just needs to go into it and have a solid night. You know, as long as they don't have engine failure, mechanical failure, which is common at Darlington, as long as that doesn't happen, they should be able to lock up that regular season championship. Uh, which is big, right? It pays big dividends. Those 15 points, those five extra points over second place. Uh, and you see it goes all the way down. I mean, all of these guys are going to be fighting for those points in the top 10 because you want each point you can get. How many times did we see it come down to one point or two points? That's why you want each one. Denny Hamlin, who received a 75-point regular season point penalty, a 10-point play, a 10 playoff point penalty, massive disadvantage here. I mean, went from potentially getting 15 to only three right now. Uh, Denny Hamlin, what a net loss of what 45 points is possible. Uh, you know, with that penalty, so huge there. Denny Hamlin also you know, involved in that first wreck. Just a rough week for Denny Hamlin. Can't catch a break right now. We'll have to see what he can do moving forward into Darlington, uh, a track that he's won at multiple times and going into the playoffs. Only one more week, and the momentum has not been on Denny Hamlin's side. He's had a rough uh, summer stretch, no doubt. Uh, let's bring up the playoff grid, right? Once again, now 13 different winners. We move Harrison Burton up from 34th in the points to 13th in the points. So big win for him. Mark Shooks Jr., the only reason we cannot put him in gold is because he's only 58 points in, not 60. He's two points from being in gold, guaranteed in. I almost could have went ahead and put him in gold. Mark Trix Jr. is in the playoffs next season. There's really no situation that he couldn't make it in. After the first stage next week in Darlington, I believe he will be mathematically guaranteed into the postseason. I mean, unless some strange incidents happen. Uh, Ty Gibbs, 39 points above. Once again, nice finish. Fifth place finish tonight was big for Ty Gibbs. Good run last week after some trouble. Definitely some adversity today for everybody, but Gibbs was able to finish solid again, 39 points above. Once again, all Gibbs needs to do is have a solid day, right? Try to stay above Chris Buescher. Try to stay in that 15th position in case you get a new winner. I don't think you'll get a new winner. It's Darlington, not Daytona, but it's possible. So you want to stay 15th at all possible, uh, and it's almost 20 points, 18 point cushion. So that's enough. You can manage that if you don't have big issues, which it's possible to have big issues, but you can manage it. Chris Buescher, 21 points above. Uh, once again, try to get to 15th if you can, but don't risk it. Don't go below. Don't don't allow Bubba Wallace to finish second and you finish 30th. Uh, and Bubba Wallace, that team, 23-11, is big on stage points. So you're going to have to watch them moving forward to try to get there. Uh, but once again, Bubba Wallace now 21 points below. So we talked about uh, that battle. Uh, it's certainly interesting. Then, of course, you have... Um, Ross Chastain now 27 points below, so certainly a disadvantage for Ross as well. It's going to be tough for him to get in, but we'll see uh, what can happen. You know, Ross Chastain missing the playoffs, his teammate in. Bubba Wallace, unfortunately, you know, his teammate is trying to win the regular season championship. So Bubba Wallace missing the playoffs, I think, puts a lot of pressure on him. I think that's not good. And I didn't really like his interview after the race either. You know, we talk about how he needs to be positive and, you know, lift himself up. But as the driver, your job is to lift your team up. Right, I mean, it's not. This isn't the fans' responsibility or the or the team's responsibility to lift the driver up. It's it's vice versa, right? The driver is supposed to lift the team up so you can get good results and have you know better outcomes. So a little disappointed that this is continuing for Wallace. I think uh, we'll have to see what happens during the week uh, to try to get into the postseason. It would certainly be interesting to watch uh, and, and hopefully. Uh, for him that he's able to get in. But that's it. That's really all there is to talk about following this race. I tried to get into all of it. It was so much that happened tonight. Darlington next week, Southern 500, big race Sunday night. Of course, I'll be back for that last race to get into the playoffs. The 16 driver playoffs will be set following the Darlington race, following the checkered flag of the Southern 500 next Sunday. So that's it. Of course, please like and subscribe if you like the video. Please share the video if you do. I really appreciate it. And of course, about this Heartbreaking Kyle Busch loss once again in 2024. Let's get rowdy.